So this lady has quite a typical appearance of lipedema, and if you look at her legs, uh, they've got quite a column-like appearance. And one of the characteristic features is you see this cut-off of fat just at the ankle here, and it looks like patients are wearing very tight socks, but in fact it's a characteristic feature of the disease. The feet are often spared, well actually completely spared, and the stemmer sign, which is indicative of lipid lymphedema, is negative. In this particular case, you can see the significant fat deposition on the anterolateral aspect of both thighs, um, and she also has a bit of fat deposition on both legs. One of the problematic areas which patients complain of is around the medial knees here. Uh, and significant fat deposition causes a slight valgus change in their legs with uh, a great deal of pressure placed on the medial compartments of the knee joint, which later manifests as early knee osteoarthritis. If I could just turn you around for a second. And you can see that there's a lot of fat deposition on the posterior thighs, um, on the posterior calves as well, and once again the heels are spared, a uh, characteristic feature. If one actually feels the subcutaneous fat, it has a slight nodular consistency. And that's another characteristic feature of lipedema, particularly with stage 2 lipedema. If you look actually at the waist, this lady has a really narrow waist. And you can see, if you look at the general body habitus, how the lower limbs are totally out of keeping with the general uh, body habitus, with a very narrow waist. There are signs of early lipedema here on the posterior arms there as well. Another sign of advancing disease. Can I just turn you around once again? Now, lipedema is a, a condition that not just is characterised by fat deposition, but you also have issues with sometimes varicose veins. You may also have concurrent lymphedema, which is termed lipolymphedema. And in some patients, I've seen that you also have a different skin texture. And I'm not sure if the camera really picks it up, but you can see there's actually a colour difference between the skin of the legs and the skin of the back of the feet here. And that's because the skin of the legs here is actually very, very thin. I can't see any bruising, which you often see in these patients, as they have capillary fragility. Where I've um, marked up the areas which I'm going to uh, address in the first stage, and the areas in particular really are the anterior and the lateral aspects of the thighs, this deposit of fat just above the knee, the lateral aspect of the legs, the medial knees, which are always a very problematic area as well. Now, I'll just turn you around. And also the significant fat deposition on the posterior, upper posterior thighs here as well. The inner medial legs I tend to leave at a later stage. And in some cases, some patients are actually quite happy after the one single stage and don't come back or request any further liposuction. That's great. So we're halfway through the tumescent liposuction. And at the start of the operation, what we did was to infiltrate uh, the subcutaneous compartment with saline which contains local anaesthetic and adrenaline. And that's the reason why the skin has this blanched appearance to it. Now through these small little stab incisions, the cannula is inserted. And this is what's known as a power-assisted liposuction. And if I turn it on, it vibrates at the very end here. This vibration dislodges the fat, which is subsequently aspirated through these small openings uh, in the liposuction cannula here. This is quite different to water-assisted liposuction, where there's no moving or vibrating tip. So this leg has been done, and you can see I've targeted the lateral leg here, and the skin thickness is back to normality here. It's very, very thin. There's very little bruising. There's some small oozing from these stab incisions, but that'll stop over time. Similarly with the thigh as well, the, in comparison to the other side, where it's very difficult to actually pinch any of the skin here, this compartment's been emptied. And around the medial knee as well. So now what we'll do is we'll just continue with liposucking this leg here, and you can see how it works. The cannula is inserted through the small little stab incision. It's turned on, and as it's passed gently back and forth, the fat is aspirated, and you can see the fat here coming up through the tube. And here, lovely yellow fat. That's exactly what we're striving for. With very little blood contamination, very little blood stinging. So you just carry on as we are. If you just focus down onto the canisters, from the right leg, 
we've removed about 2.5 litres of pure fat and I anticipate we'll do the same from the left leg as well. And around five, five to six litres of fat, that's when I'll stop and her first stage aspiration will be complete. These little stab incisions will be left open and they just seal up by themselves without causing any problems. The risk of infection is almost negligible, I must say. So, we'll just carry on as we are. See, with just gentle movement back and forth, the fat is aspirated. The technique of how you actually do it uh, is very important to maintain uh, this motion, this longitudinal aspiration. One mustn't go transversely across. So, we're at the end of the operation uh, and we've removed about two and a half litres of fat from each limb and you can see all these small little stab incisions. These will be left uh, to heal by themselves and as the skin shrinks they actually heal up very very nicely. For the first three days or so there will be some oozing from all of these little incisions, particularly the flu that was injected at the very start. Over there you can see the fat that's actually been removed from the right and left uh, lower limb and about 70% of the entire aspirate is actually fat and you can see it as the super naked in both the uh, bottles. Uh, and this is actually a very good ratio of fat to fluid aspiration. So she's reached about five litres of fat, which is the maximum uh, really one can take at one sitting, and she'll come back for the next episode to have fat removed from the posterior aspects of her lower limbs. What we'll do now is put some small dressings, all these little stab incisions, and apply her compression garment, which you must wear continuously for six weeks, uh, day and night. Um, I have no concerns about the skin. The skin usually retracts and shrinks out extremely nicely uh, and all these little incisions, the scars are barely perceptible.